Yeah, uh, sorry for, we're running a little bit late. Um, it always amazes me working in IC, uh, ICT for D, how even, uh, even in the States, uh, one little power adapter and, and nothing's working and we're having to run around. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the sort of, sort of the content gap um, and about uh, particularly uh, work that I've been doing with the, the World Summit Awards, uh, which looks at the best e-content around the world. And it also, like Rios, is uh, a partner of the UN and the UN GAID, which, uh, for those who don't know, stands for the Global Alliance for Information and Communications Technology in Development. Uh, but before I get to that, I'm actually just going to do a quick uh, uh, commercial here for Rios. Um, uh, Rios uh, was established uh, with uh, my co-founder, um, Anka Shwedai, um, a couple of years ago. And uh, we got involved uh, with the UN, and we actually were doing quite a bit of research work also for the World Bank Institute. Um, we decided on coming back uh, from India and Central South America with some of those projects. Uh, we're having our first child and decided to set up in, in the Bay Area. Um, and we saw a real sort of gap between what was going on in the leadership of Silicon Valley and, and also the incredible innovation coming up here with sort of some of the disconnects in the field and also with the UN. So we, uh, we, we started our, what was going to be our first small event, which turned into a, a summit last year. Um, which was the, uh, the Silicon Valley Challenge. And basically, it was a very simple idea. It was, why don't we get all these people under sort of one big tent, uh, people from uh, leadership and NGOs and, and folks from Silicon Valley, together with the UN and also the, the World Bank Institute. Um, and we produced, uh, and we also do quite a lot of uh, uh, research reports and, and sort of get very smart people um, to put these, you know, we put the publications together and we try and take some of this very difficult stuff and bring it down to sort of bite-sized pieces and come up with recommendations and, and try and create community around ICTD, Information for Communications, Technology and Development. Um, so our first event, our kickoff event was uh, last year, as I said, um, in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Challenge. And uh, um, the, the UN liked that very much, and we've actually signed an agreement with them now to help promote and, and push the UN Millennium Goals and also the, the Global Alliance work in ICTD. Um, there was a, a follow-on event um, in February, and actually made history because it was the first time the, uh, the UN had had a, what they call a secretariat actually in Silicon Valley. And we got another sort of three, 350 people together and also the gay secretariat for that. I'd be very happy. I bought some, some of these. So anybody that's interested in this sort of stuff, please um, you know, come up afterwards. You can have this. And also, you can go online and, and, and print these out. So there's my commercial for Rios. Um, so I'll be talking now about uh, the um, uh, sort of Web two, two, 2015. And that's sort of, I'm sort of being a little bit cheeky with this, because really nobody has a clue where, where the web's going by 2015. But um, after sort of Anka and I and our sort of associates and research, uh, research students and other folks that support our, our work, we will, we've been working on this for a few years. And we realized that the, sort of the main focus uh, with the GAID and the UN has always been sort of access, connectivity, and education. Seem to be the sort of the three broad themes there. And, and a few, um, sort of a year or so ago, um, uh, this, the, the area of sort of content and the content gap uh, really started to sort of, uh, we, we realized there was something sort of not quite happening in that area. Um, and, and then we, we really wanted to put some focus on that. And then the World Summit Awards, uh, we, we met up with them. Um, and we decided that uh, we, we wanted to look at this area. Um, and so what I'm actually going to uh, be chatting, to, chatting about today is, uh, is these, these uh, areas, um, sort of e-government, e-inclusion, e-learning, e-entertainment, business, culture, science, and health. And, and that's sort of the, the World Summit Award, which is uh, it's operating now in 165 countries. Um, and uh, this, um, this past, uh, this last month, I was actually over in... Uh, Croatia and and that area um, for five days, and I I was really astounded. It was uh, thirty 
uh, we, we, they brought 35 what they called experts over f from their sort of co code developed with the UN. Um, and we looked at uh, 168 um, award winners, over se 700 from different countries sort of came, came in and, and we, we were looking at all the basically best e-content around the world. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually um, run through some of these. And, and what I'm going to focus on, what I realized whilst I was there for sort of the week, um, doing these 15, 16 hour days, um, going with sort of all the content from around the world, I realized that the US had this really absolutely sort of unique uh, uh, contribution to make on, on the content side. And, and what I'm going to do is, uh, is, is look at some of these and share some of these award winners with you today. Um, and one of the things that's, that's uh, extraordinary for me is um, the first one we're going to look at is Maplight. And um, Maplight was started by a couple of uh, folks here in Berkeley and uh, was in, in the sort of final awards from sort of 160 countries around the world, was up against all these sort of big governments. This is the e-government winner. And uh, it, it sort of really brought home to me this sort of this, this whatever is in the DNA here with these sort of people coming from sort of small beginnings. And everybody was astounded with what Maplight w was doing. And I think the best thing to do instead of me talking is to actually uh, run the... No. Sorry, it's not clicking on with the internet. Sorry about that. You know what, though? It's right. You know, I can I can actually just go to a. You also lost it on the display. Oh, I lost it on the display. Yeah, because of the. Why don't we just do? Uh, we need to do mirroring as well for the display part. Okay. Yeah, do you want to? Yeah. Okay. That came off. That's that. Good. That's that. Yeah. We don't have oh. it up there. Oh, sorry. There it is. So I'm going to make it neater. Good, that's good. But you won't be able to see oh. here. It's off the screen? Yes. Oh, because you've mirrored it, that's why, yes. because it's on. You don't want the mirror. <coughs> you know what, though? Why don't I just. Uh, Can somebody give us a shout when they see the map light thing? <laughs> it was on. It was there. Yeah, it was, but they put it. Uh, sorry, when you went in there, you put. Yes. You put mirror. Yes. Do you remember how you t how you did right that? Here. Is any is there any Apple uh, hot shots here? Yeah. You don't see it here. Okay, I don't know, sorry. Well, let me find out. Oh, here. There. That's all. Right, I should do the, both, the same thing. There, there it is on the bottom. There, there it is. <laughs> oh, you've actually you've made, it made it bigger now, huh? We'll fix that part. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Can you change, change that so I can? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 he adjusted something again. I think it's all right now. Yay! It's, it'll be worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He says, hopefully. <laughs> oh, you just. Oh, no. 
Where who's are you? Wait, wait, wait. You, you've you've put it onto a bigger format. There's no sound either. This bill made a free trade agreement between the U.S. and the country of Oman. And here we can see the supporters. Do you know, because he, he doesn't know how to do the Apple. Do you know how to do, are you good on? You <laughs> September 19, 2006 in the Senate. On the right-hand side, you can see the number of yes votes and no votes. And then below that, you can see the groups who wanted this to bill to become law gave about twice as much money on average to legislators who voted yes compared with those who voted no. And on the bottom, we see the giving from the labor unions and other opposition groups. I'll click change and change the vote date to see the House vote. And once again, we see a similar pattern of giving to legislators who voted yes and no from each side. I'll click how each legislator voted to see contributions to each legislator. So for example, for this legislator, they voted yes. And here's the money they got from the supporting industries and here's from the opposing industries. By clicking detail, we get more detail on this person including how much they got from each of the supporting and opposing industries. Next I'll click Timeline of Contributions. And here starting at 2001 we see a graph of contributions and votes. The red and green bars are contributions for a particular time period and the flags down at the bottom are the votes on each bill. A green flag means that the motion passed. I can click on a set of red and green bars to see all the specific contributions for that time period. I'll go back to the timeline view. We can also filter the timeline for one legislator. So I'll click on Brady and that'll let us see only contributions and votes for Kevin Brady. The green flag means he cast a yes vote. This was on July 20th. And by clicking the green bar, we find that on July 19th, he received $1,000 from an individual associated with Lyondell Chemical one day before the vote. Now, suppose there's a group that supports or opposes this bill that you know about that isn't listed on our site. From the Supporters and Opponents tab, you can click Add an Organization. And this gives a form for you to put in an organization that you know about. This helps us do our research. So for example, I'll type in a fictitious group here, Consumers Association of America, and mark that they oppose this bill. Write down the source, the magazine or news article or website where I found it. And then optionally I can put in my email address. And then I'll click Submit at the bottom. And that sends a suggestion to our researchers who verify it before adding it to the database. Here's the interest groups page. I can click an interest group, the subgroup of forestry, industries that cut down trees, see the top ten recipients of their funding and also the bills that they support and oppose. You can search by legislator. I'll click on the state of California, for example uncheck those two boxes so I see only Democrats and then click on Nancy Pelosi. Here are the top ten interest funding her campaigns and the top ten organizations that are affiliated with individual contributors. With our customized feature you can bring to bear knowledge that you have about what industries support and oppose a bill even if we don't have it in our database, like this bill, where there's no money and no support and opposition groups in there so far. But if I click the customize link, I can add in the pharmaceutical industry, when which supports when this a particular amendment that I'm interested in examining. 
So I'll choose pharmaceutical manufacturing, indicate that they're supported. When this was shown in, uh, in Croatia, and, 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 and at the moment too, there's this enormous amount of anti-American feeling going on. on the so a, a couple of people sort now of when said I to me, there's no account, way any, any American uh, all groups, all the, the way things are, with this big sort of mixed jury from Arabia and Africa and uh, sort of Asia is going to sort of get, give any American companies, you know, this what they call the sort of global award. Um, but when this one came up, compared with sort of how governments are looking at this stuff, people were absolutely amazed, and particularly the folks from uh, Saudi Arabia and Asia, because they immediately saw a completely sort of new uh, sort of something across the Rubicon for them. It, it was a completely different approach uh, as far as gathering all this information as far as this connection, you know, as they sort of say, shining light on sort of money and politics. So uh, people immediately wanted to sort of figure out, there was sort of a, a lot of people asking about this company, which is actually a locally based Berkeley company, you know, how they could do this back in their own countries. Um, and, and this is a kind of, uh, this is a sort of innovation that, uh, uh, that I think is really, you know, pretty, pretty exciting to, uh, to see. Um, and we actually have a group. Um, we actually have a group in our class, uh, the IC, ICD and social entrepreneurship class, that's now working with these guys to sort of figure out a more global model um, that that maybe they can sort of start working in cooperation with some of these other countries and NGOs and sort of government organisations. So it's uh, it was a very unique model. I'm really sorry about all the technology stuff at the moment. Good. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. First, I was wondering if you could talk about uh, where MapLight gets their funding, if you may. Actually, yes. Because that was a question we had in class when last week. Did you guys actually check into that more about the, the background funding and so on? I think they. Yeah. Okay. Um, do know is that they fall under the umbrella of the Sunlight Foundation, yeah. which is a real organization that's funding uh, a lot of the transparency and accountability projects. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine that a large part of their funding comes from the Sunlight yeah, Foundation. Yeah, yeah. And basically, look for donate. There's the donation signs up on everywhere. It's a registered nonprofit. And uh, yeah, I know the WSA is pretty thorough on their due diligence, and, and uh, it seemed like it was OK. So um, anyway, I mean, uh, yeah, Sunlight Foundation, great. So OK, the next. Uh, the next one I'm going to look at is. Uh, I'm just going to go straight to the website. Um, Kiba.org. Oops, sorry. Um, so so the, the next one that actually won one of these uh, global awards, again, was started by uh, a, a young couple from the Bay Area um, called Kiva um, and started about uh, two, three years ago. And, and they sort of saw, obviously, very much a, a need there. And they're now up to uh, 100 and, uh, 123,000 plus people are donating money, um, obviously, uh, we can look at the sites here. Over $12 million. So we can, uh, it's the idea of like lenders finding, you can sort of see all the, and you can actually pick and, uh, let's check out Isidore. Isidore, yeah. Is in Ecuador and located 
It's a, a butcher. He's trying to get uh, $925. And uh, repayment terms, eight months, repaid monthly. Uh, in $25 increments. So, so the whole idea with this um, is that obviously from, from the lender's point of view, predominantly in the, the West obviously at this point in time, um, they, they can lend all over the world small amounts of money. And again, it g gives, uh, um, sort of bypasses the banks. And a fantastic example really of uh, a small group that, uh, uh, and we actually have, uh, these folks are coming over to talk to uh, one, of our, one of our events, so uh, please check out the iSchool calendar. Um, Jessica Flannery. Yeah. Sorry? They, re they repay to the, the people that are, are lending them the money. You're loaning, you're, yes, it is, it is, they are lending the money. Yes, yes, yeah. So. Do you get back um, you know, I th there's. Uh, I think because of the banks and the banking regulation, there's a lot of issues around that area, and I know they're really working, you know, hard to figure that out. Um, they were spending quite a lot of time over in Africa and different places. They set this up so it's basically sort of, sort of peer-to-peer, one-to-one at the moment. Um, and I know they are trying to sort of figure out a lot of those bank because obviously the U.S. Is, has a lot of banking regulation issues and stuff. Yeah. So at the moment, it's. Uh, you lend and then it, it gets paid back within that certain period of time. So I'm actually going to keep moving forward here. Um, this is one that uh, this is one that uh, uh, was one of the sort of U.S. U.S. entries and uh, in the science category called. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. Here. It's okay. Sorry, mess. You know, I'm just going to go to I'm just going to go to uh, YouTube and do this because it's not. Go for YouTube.
Um, so again, this was a, another project started last year by E.O. Wilson, who's a biologist from Harvard, and uh, has had an extraordinary response, uh, has been funded by uh, uh, you know, many, uh, many organizations. I was talking to the director, and they literally said they're overwhelmed globally with the response uh, from people who want to volunteer to sort of help support this effort. So again, sort of focuses back again on the sort of this idea of sort of community and sort of communal sharing and, and, and that bigger picture. Um, what software do they, you know, is it open source software that they use? Or um, you know, they're actually literally just, they're, they're setting this up and it's, it, yeah. They, li they literally have, the, the director started about two months ago. So uh, th this, is a, this is a spigot of, of the layout they'll be using. And uh, E.O. Wilson started it off as, uh, as a wish at the TED conference. And uh, then literally all these resources and folks came in. And it's, uh, yeah. So I, I can't answer that question. Yeah. Um, this, this, um, I'm actually just going to bounce over. I'm, I'm just going to jump over this one. Um, this is uh, open course, uh, open courseware by MIT. Uh, it, it got a special mention at the Global Awards, and uh, it's been around for about uh, six years now. Um, and I was am amazed reading, re reading through the statistics with it because it's uh, it now has uh, over 350 of the courses and seven different languages. It's uh, and they're continuing to build up the languages. It's completely free. Um, and uh, it's used in, I actually never knew this, but there's actually 210 countries and city-states. So it's actually been used by more people than there are sort of countries at, at the UN. And uh, it's 65% uh, 65 of that, that usage is uh, uh, outside uh, America and Northwest Europe. So it has a very high, high, high usage in, in developing countries. And it's used as sort of a blueprint to sort of check courses and, and data and, and sort of find out. It was interesting because there was a, a speaker came uh, last week uh, over to the iSchool, and uh, uh, he one of the head of the research lab in India, and he, he sort of mentioned he mentioned this one, and it sort of completely threw me because he was sort of mentioning it as uh, as sort of MIT trying to sort of create uh, engineers and stuff. And, and I, I think he kind of really missed the point because I think it was a very magnanimous gift in some ways by, by uh, MIT. And I was actually, uh, actually did a, a workshop for some of the, the folks that had set up this course. And again, um, looking at kind of community and shared efforts, they were so, uh, the demand was so much further than the resources that they had with it. And it was like the power of the web had to kind of really pushed on this collaboration and they were really s sort of struggling to kind of keep up and keep sort of changing it into different languages and, and, and so on. So, so I actually thought it was, a, I, was I was very happy that it, it, uh, it, it won an award um, as well at the WSA. Um, this was the e-culture from uh, the, the uh, US. Um, so I have to keep. So how am I doing on time? Is that okay? Getting close. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so this uh, this is sort of the la the the last sort of one really um, on the US side. One of the things that was really uh, interesting about this, in some ways, the work that Mike Welsh is doing. He's a sociocultural anthropologist and. Uh, He's uh, at Kansas University, and in a way, he's kind of summing up this sort of whole platform and, and looking at sort of the Web 2.0. And, um, and as he sort of s said to me, like instead of, you know, he, he wrote sort of some very sort of heavy, dense sociocultural uh, information about sort of the web and, and sort of new platforms and how it's going. And he said maybe six or seven sort of other academics read it. So he decided to make this sort of small film to sort of summarize what was going on and how he saw it. And he had three and a half million people checked in and watched this this video. So, uh, um, 
Is it going? No. Sorry, I was just saying it. Can you hear it? No sound. Great, even uh, anthropologists are getting in on the act now. So, um, so I think I'm actually going to uh, uh, sort of 
pretty much, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. And uh, it's uh, there was uh, we we had a we had this fantastic guy came in last last week uh, um, from Air Jaldi, who is uh, he's um, uh, in uh, Darasala and he's setting up the uh, he's he's setting up a mesh network. Um, and he, he uh, it's called Air Jaldi, setting up this me mesh network and uh, and working obviously with the uh, the Buddhist government in exile. And I, I really liked this uh, this quote that he had at the end. So I asked him if we could borrow it. And I, I think this is sort of uh, um, you know for us as we transfer from sort of access connectivity and sort of education, those gain those sort of focuses of the UN and the sort of public private partnerships. It's really exciting to kind of get into this sort of new area to like look at uh, content, and uh, um, and one of the things I, I like most about it is the sort of bottom up approach. You know that it's sort of it really is very empowering for people. And after I kind of came back from uh, came up from back from Croatia, I was really um, uh, just astounded, uh, just having looked at the contributions globally, but particularly sort of the leadership that was still going on in the US and, and still sort of very cutting edge and sort of pushing things forward. And I hope this is a sort of a small sample and is always humbling uh, with the technology. Here we are all talking about ICT for development. And I'm just amazed at how far we've got to go even in this, these sorts of, with our fancy computers and stuff over here. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Question about the title of your presentation? Yes. Web 2015. Yes. Is that related to the Millennium Development? It goals? was. Yes. I mean, because but we've been working away, and I, I suddenly realized last year, and we were talking a lot about it, that uh, we're sort of almost halfway through, and and we're not doing so well, particularly on this sort of uh, in some of the ICT areas, um, and there's a lot of uh, particular. You know, I go back and spend time in New York with the UN, and and. Uh, a lot of the private sector has not really kind of supported this stuff in the way that uh, they, were, they were hoping. European governments are pushing very, very hard. Um, but on the content side, which is obviously just as important as, as the sort of other areas. Um, so, so I was sort of, uh, yeah, I was just playing around a little bit with that deadline. And, and I'm working very hard with the WSA to kind of get the whole content part sort of on the agenda more. Um, because it's, at the moment, it's really not, yeah. So you um, were talking about some of the winners um, yes. that you reviewed in Croatia. Yes. And I yes. was curious about the application process. So um, do all of these interns apply? And if so, do they submit kind of an SROI or like some type of a social impact assessment? Is that at all included? Yeah, in it's yes, it's actually quite an elaborate process. Um, and uh, they, um, yeah, if I, I should take that. If you're okay. interested in whatever, I can, I can sort of point you in that direction on the WSA stuff, yeah. I actually have a follow-up question to that. What were the criteria used? Because that would help me understand what the criteria are for a website that's going to promote social change. The criteria with the WS, you know, again, I actually have some of the lists and stuff, and I, it's it's a really long. Ex but maybe an example, just uh, ex example of the criteria for the websites. Um, that. Uh, <laughs> It's a whole formal process. I mean, it's sort of, it's just, it's, it's pages of it. I mean, I just. I'm trying to understand the thinking. What, what are some of the principles for websites that promote social change? Um, you know what? I'm, I, I can't answer that question at the moment. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and you could w, you know if you go to the WSA website, it's uh, yeah, it's run by a lot of Germans and Austrians, and it was it's a very uh, labor intensive. And if program. I can maybe just jump in here, um, Kiva and um, Kiva and um, your elder, the, the US um, winners that 
made it into the um, the global the global winners. I think part of and Paul was talking there was quite a resistance to anything that came from the U.S. So it was kind of an uphill struggle for them. And part of the reason why, especially Maplight and Kiva did so well was because they have this potential for, for global scalability. And, and in, in uh, terms of Kiva, actually already having that impact on a global level, I think that was really powerful as something that. that you know, people could really relate to. And in terms of map light, the interest that it generated from other countries seeing, you know, the possibilities there. I mean, yeah. So that, that was one of the criteria in terms of the, the actual and the potential impact they could have on, on a global level. Yeah. Um, question. Uh, Rios, where does Rios get its funding from? We, we um, I know you hear at the beginning, we, we, we have to do, we do a huge amount of, uh, sort of data collection and research reports and uh, we, we primarily, we get most of our money through that work with the UN, um, uh, WBI, World Bank Institute, um, and uh, we do, we put on these summits and workshops as well where we sort of have invited, you know, invited guests. So, it's, it's so who's asking that question? Right. Oh yeah, yeah, thanks. It's primarily World Bank funding then? No, we got a very small amount from them. We we were we did it we did a couple of projects for them over in in India, but primarily our, our partnership is to with 2015 with the UN Gate. So they're our main kind of link UN and Gate. platform. G A T E. Sorry. I'm sorry. The UN what? Gate Global Alliance for Information and Communications Technology and Development. Yeah. I know that you were you were highlighting the U.S. entries into this contest this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you give a few examples of some of the, the non-U.S. entries? Could you maybe show one or two? Yeah, I was. I'm, I'm actually sort of was out of time. I, I was going to do that, but because of the technical okay. stuff and linking it all, I'm just going to leave. But if you, I'd be very happy to pass that on to you and talk to you or show you <laughs> stuff later. But there was a hundred and. There was another, uh, there was about sort of 60 or so from other countries, yeah. And I, I was going to show some of those, but yeah, just going to, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hope Thanks there are any questions. I uh, just want to thank Paul for coming and talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.